few days ago, one of our teachers showed us an article and teasingly asked us if we'd ever seen a newspaper before. We were both kind of just like, <laughs> oh, you millennials, you probably don't even know what a CD is. He actually thought that he was being funny. That sentence caught our attention. It wasn't the fact that us high schoolers actually aren't millennials. We're Generation Z. It was the fact that it wasn't the first time that we had heard that joke before. Sure, the joke was in good fun and we all had a laugh out of it. But if we dig a little deeper, it leads to the underlying issue of painting teenagers and young adults as ignorant. Now, this isn't a new phenomenon. Society often associates age with worth. And although we may not have the same experiences that a 40-year-old does, our opinions are just as valid. But why should society respect a 16-year-old's voice anyway? Because we're able to provide perspective that older adults have long forgotten. So who decided that us young people were so bad? Looking back at the silent generation, born 1945 and earlier, children were meant to be seen and not heard, hence the name. Soon enough, baby boomers came around and began their own families. Remembering their distant, detached relationships with their parents, the baby boomer parenting style became hovering, omnipresent, emphasizing the pursuit of happiness and success. Throughout the generations, Children who were once meant to be silent developed voices. And now, with the addition of technology, children are developing their own opinions and aren't so much a product of their parents. This is evident with the most recent generation, Generation Z, which is typically those born between the mid-1990s and the late 2000s. Our generation is unique in the fact that we have been exposed to so much more than previous generations in schools, extracurriculars, and especially on social media. But that doesn't make us any worse than our parents. It just makes us different. And in a way, this can be a form of rebellion between the generations, which we have witnessed throughout history. Most notably, the controversial 60s counterculture, the political upheaval baby boomers experienced from the Vietnam War, and the civil rights movement exacerbated the clash between them and the silent generation, who remained conservative. Teenagers during this time were viewed as controversial and disrespectful, though they were just calling for change and social justice. Take, for example, the Little Rock Nine. This was a group of nine African-American teenagers who were the first black students enrolled into a previously all-white school. Opposition ran so rampant that the governor ordered the Arkansas National Guard to block these students from entering school. Eventually, the federal government stepped in and President Dwight D. Eisenhower sent 1,200 members of the United States Army to escort the Little Rock Nine to their first full day of school. The resilience that these students possessed paved the way for black children all over America to finally receive the same education that white children had been granted for years. Clashes between groups of people were simply because of a difference in the environment in which they were raised. So, it's no doubt that this tension between generations exists. It's been proven time and time again. Yet, this is no excuse to belittle others, whether they are older than us or younger than us. Because when teenagers take a stand, Change comes for the better. Teenagers haven't just been revolutionary in the past. This is happening right now. Two months ago, one of the most deadly school shootings occurred in Parkland, Florida. This tragic event ignited call for gun reform, which isn't uncommon after gun violence in America. However, this particular event was unique in the fact that most of the adults weren't, most of the advocates weren't adults. They were high school students. It's obvious that these teenagers are passionate about the messages that they share, and they've even been gaining a strong political presence. Most notable is survivor-turned-activist Emma Gonzalez, who coined the phrase we call BS. She and her fellow survivors have been gaining massive amounts of media coverage, 
organizing national walkouts, marches, and even having face-to-face -face conversations with prominent lawmakers. However, some adults are discrediting and devaluing their stories simply because of their age. The Parkland shooting survivors have been told to stay out of politics and even been harshly criticized for being paid crisis actors. Leslie Gibson, the GLP candidate in Maine, running unopposed, verbally, verbally attacked Gonzalez on Twitter. Due to her and the student's large political presence, backlash against him and his offensive comments caused two people, both Democrat and Republican, to run against him. Soon thereafter, Gibson dropped out of the running. High school students have been swaying ardent gun owners to turn in their weapons, inspiring dozens of companies to cut ties with the NRA, and even causing the president to propose tougher background checks on gun purchases. High school students have transformed, then continue to transform the gun control debate, an issue that adults have been grappling with for decades. Yes, adults do make the laws. But when adults are making laws that directly affect us, we deserve a seat at the table. Now more than ever, the teenage perspective should be valued, for we have achieved the unimaginable. Jack Andraka developed a tool to detect pancreatic cancer when he was a sophomore. 16-year-old Mosiah Bridges began his own bow tie company, now worth $1.5 million. 16-year-old Rowan Blanchard is both a successful actress and social activist. And there's me. I don't have a net worth of $12 million. It's more like $12. But I do want to go into politics when I'm older. And I will need the support and the guidance of the adults around me. I hope that that guidance comes with a thoughtful understanding that what adults do now will affect my future forever. I don't know what I want to do, but that shouldn't invalidate my place in society or change how adults treat me. So often, our perceived value reflects how much our future is worth. And he may not know it yet, but what the president does today will affect my future forever. What our parents, teachers, and lawmakers do today will affect all of our futures forever. So the next time a teenager asks you for advice, or even gives you advice, listen. Instead of shutting us down, remember that we inherit your decisions. Another teacher of ours is one of the most beloved teachers at our school, and with good reason. He's encouraging, relatable, and actually funny. All jokes aside, he is the perfect example of an adult willing to listen to teenagers. He practices what he preaches, and he isn't afraid to admit when he's wrong. In fact, he uses those opportunities to show us that he sees us as equals. One of the most unique things about him is that he has a thoughtful understanding what he does today will affect us. He knows that we can change the world and he gives us the tools necessary to do so. He doesn't judge us by our mistakes and he's never made assumptions about us. Now I highly doubt Jack Andraka, Messiah Bridges, or even Rowan Blanchard would have been able to accomplish what they have today without breaking past the boundaries that society had set for them. And to the rest of my fellow teens, Continue to break the stereotypes against us. Continue to be bold. Continue to make your voices heard. Continue to shatter glass ceilings and exceed expectations. Continue to demand a seat at the table. We don't have to confine ourselves to silence. If we harness the potential we contain now, we will make the changes that we want to see. Two adults, with all due respect, Please remember that we inherit the world that you have been making decisions for for years. Remember that we are not ignorant. We are educated. We are not obnoxious. We are bold enough to speak out against injustice. We deserve to have our voices heard on matters that directly affect us. We are a force to be reckoned with. 
We are not entitled. We are empowered. And we will be the change that we want to see in the world. Because whether or not we know what a newspaper is, no one can put an age on the messages that we have to share.